I didn't know anyone, never been here, and I'm at the Good News Rescue Mission. Uh, I'm in a homeless shelter, and I hated it. Uh, my name is Rudy Sines. I'm 31 years old, and I live in Redding, California. But growing up, my childhood was, uh, it was good and bad. There were pros and cons. Uh, my, my parents worked very hard, and I had everything I needed in terms of uh, a roof over my head, uh, food on the table. I could never really find uh, a group of people that I could fit in with. Um, and as I went through high school, uh, I got cut from all the sports teams my freshman year. I got cut from basketball, football, baseball, and I had no one who was really a close friend. Mm -hmm. So around my junior year of high school, um, I met some kids who smoked marijuana. Um, I spent time with them, we smoked some weed, and we just, we connected. It was easy to fit in with them. Um, I had some money, I fit in, and that's what I was looking for. Um, I found my group of people. Yeah, unfortunately for me, once I tried the marijuana, I went immediately into drinking alcohol, um, experimenting with pain pills, and within a couple years, um, I was uh, I was taking Oxycontin, um, I was smoking it, and uh, soon enough, that led to heroin. Uh, I was getting DUIs, and my second DUI, uh, I don't remember any of it, uh, all I recall is I woke up uh, in the drunk tank in Sacramento and from the police report and from what I was told, um, I had totaled my car, I had totaled another car, and there was uh, a tree in the back seat of my car and uh, apparently I had climbed out the front and somehow, some way, I didn't have a scrape, I didn't have a cut or a bruise, um, I was unscathed. Uh, and I still don't know how that happened. My life spiraled out of control. As I progressed through that old life, uh, I couldn't help but, but see things happen that went beyond coincidence. Uh, I would bypass serious consequences. As I was, I was in jail, I was waiting for my court date and uh, I was let into the court. Uh, and when you're in custody, you come in with handcuffs on and it's very, um, it's demoralizing. And as I sat down to hear the, the judge read off what amounted to 24 felonies against me, I looked to my left and I saw my mom and dad sitting in the courtroom. And I remember looking at my mom and I could see uh, the pain and the worry and the sadness and the fear on her face. And uh, that just shook me. It was so unexpected that uh, I'll never forget that moment. It was terrifying. The way it, it, it ended up going, it, it worked out better for me. Um, the crashes, the DUIs, something was telling me that that was not my story, that that was not the end. It was just uh, a chapter of my life. And uh, I soon came to find out that um, there was a calling on my life that God had placed on it, um, but I had just not realized it yet. But I could always sense it. There was always something telling me that. The judge gives me an opportunity to go to the Good News Rescue Mission. When I first got to the mission and I did the program, it was good, but I hadn't yet really met Jesus. So when I finished the program, I went right back, right back to smoking heroin almost immediately. And for 10 months, I was uh, really struggling but I remember uh, near the end of that, there was a night when I had reached my breaking point. Uh, and I, I dropped down to my knees and I, I cried out to the Lord and I asked for help because I was so tired of living that life. I had no more fight in me. Uh, and I, in my mind, I had two ultimatums. Um, I was either gonna go jump in front of a train and just end it or the Lord was gonna intervene and help me. And about a week later, I was back at the mission to do the program again. Um, that first day there, uh, I thought I was having a heart attack, so I left. I stole a bike, I rode away, uh, but the Lord, in His grace, um, brought me back and I did the 18 month program for a second time. So while you're in the, the recovery program at the mission, 
Um, within that program, there's the Academic Success Center. Uh, you learn basic computer skills, um, English, math, um, it, it kind of expound on the computer literacy. And while I was there, since I had some college background, um, I was able to pursue um, getting back into college. And through the Academic Success Center, I was able to get um, into Shasta College. And then from Shasta College, um, I entered the Simpson Degree Completion Program. Um, I was able to complete my bachelor degree at Simpson. And by the grace of God, in a crazy roundabout way, um, I ended up working and still do for the degree completion program at Simpson. Through the resource of the Academic Success Center, I learned the importance of education and, and what that can do for someone who has been stuck in the same old mindset for years. It opened up a variety of avenues and, and roads that I never knew existed. Um, and it really helped uh, to change my life. It's so important to know that you're not just funding shelter and food and recovery, but you're funding soul transformation. And you can't measure that. You won't find it on a spreadsheet, but it has lasting eternal impact that is just incredible. So just keep that in mind. You're funding soul transformation.